Hello, everyone. I want to welcome the lovely Bryce. You all know her and love her. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure most of my followers are your followers or subscribers. So um, I just wanted to have um, Bryce on today just to kind of do a little bit of like a video on her backstory. Cause I feel like, you know, we're all focused on what's going on in the world and everything right now. And I think it's just like really important to like know who you're talking to. <laughs> Um, and we all love Bryce. She's great. Um, she is very much a, um, very much a pivotal person in my journey in YouTube, Aww. especially. And even like with my clothing line, girl, like you've been my best supporter. Listen, all I wear is your, sh your shirt. That's really <laughs> all I wear now. That's I all love I wear it. now is her shirts. I mean, for real, like I love your shirt so much. So, and I just, well, I know. So and for people on my channel, because I'll put this on my channel too, I'm going to put the code PASSIONS. Yep. Yeah, it's a discount code for 15% um, off anything you buy, like, collectively. Um, but yeah, I, um, uh, I offered it to Catherine Edwards when they started doing the Passion series. So for all of Bryce's subscribers, that's also there for you as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, you've been super monumental in my shop and, I love you it. know, <laughs> just in general, like, no, it's great. It's awesome to be able to like, actually like promote something that you really love. <laughs> like, and it's best. a friend shop too. So that too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the sisters from different misters and mothers, but you know, <laughs> Um, we live okay. Lifetimes together, it's fine. It's Probably, fine. I'm sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just kind of wanted to like start off and ask you like who I'm curious to know who you were like as a teenager. I just find that super interesting to like hear oh, people's right. backstory, and I just like I like to see other people's point of views of like who they were as opposed to like who you are now. You know, it's interesting because I think the core of who we are never really changes. Yeah. But I think that a lot of us on this journey, I was a weird kid, but I don't know if my, I had a lot of friends I, and I grew up in a very small private school. So, you know, I think that's yeah. a different um, reality than kids who go to like these big schools where there's thousands of people. And literally I yeah. grew up with the same group of kids, my whole small intimate group of kids, my whole life. And so, you know, um, their siblings were like my siblings, their parents were, you know, we were in and out of Joe's house from the time we were kids to teenagers. And so in that respect, it, it, you know, I think about like high school and you hear these stories of like cliques and mean girls and yeah, there were mean girls, but when your school's so freaking small and everybody knows each other and has known each other for years, yeah. you don't really get that same, I don't, that yeah. same type of angst. I don't think. Um, right. But the interesting thing is, I don't have, I have like full memories of middle, middle school, but I only have select memories of high school. And that was because when I was 15 years old, I got really sick and, uh, no, no doctor really knew what was going on with me. I, um, it was the beginning of my sophomore year and I remember sitting in my chemistry class and I'll, I was sitting right behind John Perry. So John Perry, if you're listening, hello. Um, <laughs> you know how we remember our friends from, from, from yeah. like outside their first and last name. I yeah. remember what I had on, what I was wearing. I was sitting in my chemistry class and I hate, I hate science. I'm not a math science person. I was, I'm always go figure English philosophy <laughs> is my, my thing. History, my thing. Storytelling. <laughs> yeah. Storytelling. So did not, did not enjoy the chemistry, but I was sitting in chemistry class and all of a sudden I felt like the area around me just whoosh, like everything just changed. And all of a sudden everything looked like I was in like a fishbowl. And all of a sudden I got really, really tired. And, um, that afternoon, my mother, we had required after school activity at school. And that's because in the high school, the upper school, half of it was boarding, uh, boarding mm -hmm. students. And so we were required to stay on campus until like five, six o'clock. They'd do sports, all that kind of stuff. But th for that particular afternoon, I was leaving right after the academic day for some reason. And I can't remember why, but my mother was picking me up. And I remember I got in the car. My mother was like, so you don't, something doesn't look right. Are you okay? And I was like, I just feel really tired. Well, a few days keep going by and I'm, I'm getting more and more tired. And I was running cross country at the time. And my coaches and my mother decided, my parents decided that, 
I wasn't going to run for a while. I would just watch the meets and um, cause something was going on. And I'll never forget. I was, we were running against Westminster, which is another private school here in Atlanta. One of our biggest competitors um, for everything X two private schools. And we were at the meet and my best friend was the manager and the meet was being set up, but I literally had so little energy that I remember sitting on the ground outside and Liz, you're from the South. Like it's hot as hell in September, October, like it's hot here and there are bugs and insects everywhere. And I remember watching this bug like crawl up my leg and not even having any, any energy to like take it off my leg. And we got back to our school. Our parents came to pick us up and my mother was like, okay, you're going to sleep in that day. We're going to take you half day. Something's going on. We're going to let you sleep in. So I did. And I got up that morning and I was in the shower and I remember there was this big lump under my armpit, like a golf ball. And I ran out of the shower. I thought I had like breast cancer at 15. Like I was right, like, what's right. this? And my yeah. dad was at home. My mother, he took me to my mother and she felt it. They took me to the doctor. It was my lymph node was swollen. Mm-hmm. And so I ended up staying the rest of the day at home. Well, the next morning I had this armpit swollen and all not from my shoes, wow. my body down, like all these lymph nodes started to swell up. And I kept getting weaker and weaker and weaker. Well, at that point, because I was at a private school, you know, by the grace of God, um, my parents could, uh, my parents had a, a meeting with my teacher and the headmaster and my teachers basically just sent my work home. And so I started doing, you know, before Zoom was around, this was before any of that. So I was literally doing my homework from the sofa at my parents' yeah. house. Well, my health kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Uh, my body temperature dropped to like 92, which my body temperature rests at like 96 anyway. Um, I have low body temperature, but, um, and then the, 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 the strangest thing happened is I started waking up with these like scratch marks all over me, which I just showed you a picture from the day before. It was like literally all over my body. It would be every morning. And my mother was starting to freak out about it. She'd take me to the doctor and they'd be like, oh, she's scratching herself. My mother was like, no, she's not. In the meantime, I was having spinal taps. I was tested for everything. Diabetes. Like they, they literally were testing me for everything. I went to an infectious disease doctor, which most of those doctors deal with AIDS patients. So I'm, I think they were kind of relieved to have a 15 year old girl. Um, you, they, no one could figure out what was going on. All the tests they ran came back negative, 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 mm-hmm. negative for everything under the sun. And then with the scratch marks, uh, my mother would sit up and watch me at night and they would just appear. These scratch marks would just appear. I would be laying on my bed at night and I all of a sudden I wouldn't be able to like move my arms and my legs. I'd start screaming. My parents would have to come and literally like punch my arms to get movement back. Uh, They tried everything, putting magnets under my mattress, all sorts of stuff. And then it got really bad when the scratch marks started to appear in my eyes. And at that point, the doctor saw that. I remember the doctor was like, I don't know what this is. She's not obviously not doing this. Yeah. Um, It never, nothing ever came of it. I just got better. Eventually Mm -hmm. just got better. Um, but it was so traumatic that I think as an, as I got into my twenties through school, uh, moving out to, I lived in Los Angeles as well. I kind of like tried to ignore it. Now my whole life, I've seen spirits, I've seen ghosts, I've seen angels, I've seen demons, but it got really intense after that happened. And I kept trying to forget about it. Like, oh, that was just a weird thing that happened. And actually it was one of my first tarot card readings I went to in Los Angeles where it came up in the reading. And the lady was like, something happened to you. And it was spiritual. And that was the first time anybody had said to me, like, this was spiritual. What happened wow. to you was spiritual. And for a long time, I thought it was something negative, like I had been attacked. But as I started to get older and started to investigate more and more and more, no, it was like a rite of passage. It was a shifting of consciousness for me, at least, which I now believe brings us to where we are today. Um, Now, of course, in my 20s, living in Los Angeles, I don't want to talk about that. I didn't want to talk about that weird stuff. You know, I was uh, more interested in uh, boys and (laughs) nightlife and all that kind of stuff, (laughs) you know, than talking about the God moments. But um, it, it makes a lot more sense now. Um, at, at yeah. this uh, timeline shift that we're in, what what's I think a lot of and I think a lot of us in this community. I know you've had your spiritual experiences since you were a kid. I think a yeah. lot of us who are in this community always kind of had one foot in one side of the veil and one foot in another. Yeah, 
you know. Yeah. I mean, and it's kind of, uh, it was out of the means of survival in a sense. Like there was, you know, for me, there was a part of me that was like very much there and knew it was real. But at the same time, like I wanted to be a teenager yeah. and like be normal. I yeah. literally would be like, why am I not normal? Like yeah. what in the world? Um, but yeah. So do you think that that was kind of like your pivotal type of moment? Yeah. That, like kind of opened your... Um, Levi, he's asking for popcorn. <laughs> Ooh, he's enjoying yummy. the show. <laughs> yes. Um, but um, do you think that that was kind of your pivotal moment of like, oh, this is real. I'm not crazy. You know, like that kind of well, like took you into like diving further into it. Yes and no. So I think okay. it was pivotal in the sense that it changed my path. Um, because I think where I was headed, the path I was headed on, was the path that was expected of me at that point. I wanted to go to law school. Like that's what I was going to do after oh, wow. university was go to law school. I was already looking. I mean, when, if you're a private school kid, you know that they're constantly from the time you're like in fifth grade, they're, they're pushing colleges, you know, what are you yeah. going to do? What are you going to do? I mean, we, I didn't know that like university and college was an option until I was in it and someone right. dropped out. I thought that yeah. like you were just like, by law required to go. That's how right that was <laughs> for me yeah. as a kid. Um, you know, and I my parents, both my my parents went to college. My dad's a veterinarian. Both of my grandmothers went to college. You know, my my mom's family, they're all doctors. So that was always very education was very important. Um, even not so much to the extent of extreme. They still wanted us to have a social life. In fact, they always said our social life was really important because that's how we learned how to communicate with people. But um I think if that, that for it's like my subconscious shifted to become slowly become more conscious and it shifted mm -hmm. my perception of the world. And it kind of, without me really even knowing it, it, it took where the path I was headed on and did a left turn to go to the path where I was, what I was supposed to be on. Um, yeah. which then of course, after living in Los Angeles for a long time, I uh, ended up just hightailing it over to India and spending mm -hmm. A great deal of time in India having a ego death and a you know dark yeah so what was your decision for going to India that's um I was sitting in the attic <laughs> of my friend's house going through artwork and a voice told me go to India and study yoga and so I did nice that's basically, I love that. you know, is that? that's basically <laughs> what happens I get this voice that I've had since I was a kid and it's a very yeah. distinct voice and it tells me to do things and it's yeah. never violent. It's never like bad things. So I don't want to make commenting that it's, it's always like, right. this is what you have to do now. It's the same Mary Magdalene voice I had when I was 16 years old. I kept getting the name Mary Magdalene stuck in my head. And as I said, it was my Magdalene series. So I knew yeah. that was a foreshadowing into now looking back, that was a foreshadow into the missing book series I've been doing, which that was the voice too. I was live on David Zublik's show. And the voice told me, read the missing books of the Bible. And I just said to David live, do you want to read through the missing books of the Bible? And he was like, yes, let's do it. And I was like, okay. And that led yeah. us down that journey. So yeah, a voice in my head said, go to India and study yoga. Mm. That's, That's that divine feminine intuition thing. I yep. literally just made a video today about that for all my show. I was like, it's like, you know, it's like that thing that just kind of tells you, oh, maybe you should go this way. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's very <laughs> gentle too. And I think yeah. I even said to my friend, if that particular friend is watching right now, I think I even looked up and said, I think I have to go to India and study yoga. Like it was just the most yeah. random. Like we were going through art and I was like, I think I have to go to India and study yoga now. <laughs> like, I yeah, go. that's Bye. awesome. I love that because that's very similar to mine because it was uh, go to Africa. And I was like, why in the world would I go to Africa? Like, I, and I was like, so against the like missionary thing of like, I don't feel called to Africa. Like, what the heck? And then <laughs> I ended up meeting my husband. To, literally, he the did. voice was telling you go to Africa. Yep. The voice was like, let me give you a different dream. And I was like, okay, go to Africa. I was like, whatever, I'll travel, well, might as well. And I did. And I met my husband and started this whole completely different direction of life. And I feel like that's what happened with you. Cause obviously your times in India are like, you know, you talk about them a lot. Cause I mean, that's where yoga started for you and you know, all that. Yeah. Like, I was already practicing before I went. Um, in fact, the okay. school that I go to my school that I'm authorized through, um, you have to have letters of recommend. It's very hard to get into. Um, okay. and like when a uh, registration opens uh, about, they open it at midnight at a particular date in India for this school and about 2000 applications will go through in the first five minutes and only like 200 people get accepted. And so the yeah. fact that I got accepted to begin with is pretty, pretty awesome and very yeah. divine. And, um, yeah. 
you know, it's, it's, um, it's funny. I was actually talking to Catherine about this today. It's, it's interesting because in the spiritual world, especially with spiritual disciplines and practices, you have to have a teacher. You have mm-hmm. to. Um, and, and it's because we all have blind spots and, um, you know, I, I am a teacher for some people, but I also have a teacher myself. And so, um, and that also helps check your ego. If you have an ego, the ego is the false sense of self, false sense of reality. Egos are fragile. Egos can't take criticism. Egos can't take the dark night of the soul. The dark night of the soul is what crushes the ego. Um, there's a difference between confidence and ego. Like I said this with uh, Stephanie today, which a video that's going to air on Monday. Um, we think about like Mr. T, like everybody thinks he has an ego. He doesn't have an ego. If he had an ego, he wouldn't be doing what he's doing because holy shit, you know, look what he's been through. Yeah. He's it's got not about him. <laughs> yeah. He's got confidence in what he's doing. Yeah. It's not the ego. Um, and so when we, when we have, when we're, when we're living in that false sense of image, that false sense of reality, which is the ego, then we're not spiritually attuned at all. Yeah. Um, that's when we can be deceived. That's when we lack discernment. That's when we're not connecting with our intuition, all that kind of stuff. And if we allow that to shatter, which is hard, that's not easy to do. I mean, yeah. I literally had to go to freaking India and for in order for it to happen, just sit in a corner. I had to go to Africa. <laughs> yeah. Like I literally had to like go sit in a corner in another country in a situation where, you know, it's one thing if it was like, going to Europe or like Canada or Australia, which mm. Australia is one of my favorite countries in the whole wide world. It would be easy. Cause it's a lot like our lives here. Like there's not a lot of yeah. discomfort. Um, right. But when you're in a culture that's so vastly different from your own, even that shatters your mm-hmm. ego, even that right. brings you to a place of being uncomfortable. And that's what I tell my students all the time that come into my courses, you know, because part of my job teaching, I, I have to like break their, false ideas about yoga. That's the first thing I have to do is like, be like, whatever you learned in that vinyasa flow class, forget it. <laughs> Cause 99% of the yoga you see is not actually yoga. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It is not about being comfortable. If your yoga teacher right. is saying, do whatever feels good to you. That's not yoga. You got to yeah. get uncomfortable. It starts with your gross body. It starts with putting your leg behind your head and sitting there and mm-hmm. being uncomfortable. And then watching the thoughts that come up around that which usually have to do with the fragile ego, you yeah. know, it's about humbling yourself. And um, we're in this, like, we're in this world of like comfort, mass comfort. And it's so strange because like, even when I've talked about detox and stuff on my channel, I'm just like, people are like that, you know, or like have mentioned like tools that people can use to like release fascia and like all that stuff. They're like, that's so painful. I'm like, yeah, it's yeah, not going to be comfortable. It's going to be comfortable. Like, you can't change (laughs) if you don't change right like what change comes out comes out of you like sitting on your couch or like laying in your bed there's There's literally (laughs) no magic pill it's hard work and it's Mm -hmm. and it's scary it can be very very scary it can be very daunting but but when you're able to come to that place of vulnerability and humility that's when the real magic happens Right. You know? And that's yeah. what I'm grateful for this practice that I do, the lineage that I practice. It is it's so physically challenging that everyone gets their ass handed to them. And so the, 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 the first the first level of that is having the beautiful practice. And I myself, I'm pretty athletic. I'm pretty coordinated. I'm not competitive, but I'm but I, that never was super hard for me. But this practice brings you to a place of literally crushing you to the point where if you're going to be humbled at some point. And when that happens, you can find that vulnerability. And when you find that vulnerability, then you can move forward in understanding who you truly are. And what's funny is like, I totally 100% agree with that because, you know, I was very much a type of person that didn't like being uncomfortable with anything. And then I kind of like started to do uncomfortable things and then I got addicted to essentially doing the uncomfortable things and seeing the change that actually happened when I put myself out there and like, let myself fail or let myself be in pain. Like it's, it's so funny because I have such a switched mindset now from it. And I feel like that's the kind of mindset you need to like, (laughs) to heal and to grow and to actually be of service 
in this yeah. world, basically. Yeah. You got to get rid of that ego. That's really the thing that has to go. It has to go. And I feel like yeah. our, the new world we're going into, there's no room for that because yeah. it's a false sense of self. It's, it's dense. It's, we're going to a lighter density. So it has to go. You have to yeah. figure out who you really are because the ego yeah. is not who you really are. It's an illusion. Um, yeah. and, um, yeah, it's look at long distance runners, like marathon runners. Yeah. And it's one of the most uncomfortable things you can do, but so many right. people, I mean, I, we were talking about this with Shanti and there's so many people I personally know who are long distance runners, not just for their health, but for their mind. Cause yeah. it brings them to that place of, 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 cause when the ego is active, when the ego is active, there's panic, there's fear, there's obsessiveness, there's aggressiveness, but when there is no ego, there's calmness, mm -hmm. there's allowing. And when there's ego, that means that there's no trusting in the universe, yeah. right? Or God source, right? Because. Yeah. I watched a great video yesterday about ego and it was um, this lady asking a question of like, is, is there really a difference between my ego and my soul? And the guy was like, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And the reason why it's a problem is because you're putting your ego in the place that your soul should be. <laughs> Like, I was like, yes, that's yes. exactly it. Like it doesn't want to do the job that you're making it do. And when it does, it's afraid of everything. <laughs> yes. Well, and that's the bit, that's the main concept of the yoga sutras. The main concept that was written 5,000 years ago. We haven't changed 5,000 years, but we're about to yeah. ascend. Prakriti, the three stars are Prakriti, Purusha, Ishvara. Those are, those are Sanskrit words. Prakriti is nature. Purusha is the soul. Ishvara is God. Okay. Prakriti nature has got, excuse my language, but fuck all to do with God. All right. <laughs> Prakriti is just the Shakti. It's just the expression of soul. Right. But it's yeah. not soul. Prakriti has the, the two, two, the, the two, that's how tired I am. <laughs> I, did, I did that in the other show. I think it was a Catherine. I was like the two, the two, the two roles of, of, um, of Prakriti is it has a birth, a life and a death. And because it has a birth, a life, and a death, that means it's always changing. It's forever changing. Mm -hmm. But the soul, Parusha, is eternal and therefore never changing. You also say, okay, so you can say that Prakriti is the seeable, Parusha is the seer. Prakriti mm -hmm. is the watchable, Parusha is the watcher. So mm -hmm. one thing we have to understand is that the ego is Prakriti. And what we, the delusion that we're under as human beings is that we think our identity, our property, our nature is who we really are. But if we're eternal beings and our property is destined to end, then that's not who we really are. And that's where human suffering comes in. That's when the human condition comes at place because we forget who we are and we put yeah. all of our eggs in the basket of nature, of our identity. And so when something doesn't go right, when um, your partner leaves you or you lose your job or, you know, or you just have a dark night of the soul. If, if your whole existence is put in this ego, then that's right. going to cause major suffering because you, yeah. can't, you can't control that change. The right. only thing you can control is yourself. And that soul mm -hmm. is something that's just watching it happen and okay. learning from the experience. And if that's, you can, yeah. Oh, keep going. Well, so if you could tap into that watcher, be, be the watcher, not the judge, mm -hmm. be the viewer. Yeah. And there, then you learn how to like experience your emotions, feel your emotions, but not act them out mm -hmm. because you know that they're just temporary. Yeah. You shall pass. And so yeah. that 100% your ego has nothing to do with your soul. Your ego is the false sense of self. Mm -hmm. And that's where your delusion is. That's where your suffering comes from. Yeah. This great teacher that I listened to, I've talked about him before. Um, his name is Ian Clayton, but he talks about, you know, you essentially have to be really dead before you can be really alive. <laughs> and I think he's essentially talking about that, like the two shall pass. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, and it's funny because you just touched on another thing that I talked about, about um, emotions, um, how, you know, sometimes the emotions are not ours. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, like we are like a porous being, like we have holes everywhere. Our skin is like holes and, you know, things and vibration, 
emotions, which are vibrations come into us and they go out of us. And yeah. sometimes they're not ours. And like acting upon the ones that we think are ours when they're not causes so much destruction. Yes. <laughs> but yes. And how many times do people tell you, like when you're angry to go away for a minute and collect yourself, it's so that yeah. you can process it without projecting that out. Right. Right. And, yeah. uh, and that's what yoga teaches you too. And, and again, that whole surrendering because Ishvada God only connects to Purusha, right? Cause mm -hmm. God is eternal and we are also eternal. So that's the two, the property, the nature is just a Shakti. It's just the Shakti of that expression. It's not the eternal. It's just the Shakti, the expression of the eternal. Right. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. And, and I, I really, I, I feel like where we're going in our timeline shift, more and more people are going to have to deal with this because this For is sure. going to up our vibration, you know, and yeah. Sri Swami, Sri, Sri Swami uh, commentary I have over here, the yoga sutra, he talks about when you truly understand this, when you truly start to understand this, you can really enjoy life. You can yeah. see life is just something that's fun in the good times mm -hmm. and the bad, because you know, it's not permanent. It's mm -hmm. not forever. <laughs> yeah, I love uh, this. I, I passed by this video on TikTok that this girl was like, you know, what's like the best life hack. You know, when something crap happens, just being like, this is a great plot twist to the story. You know, just kind of like looking at it like a narrator point of view, like, hmm, what a good plot twist. My boyfriend just dumped me. <laughs> that is <laughs> a <awesome>. plot twist. <laughs> I was yeah. like, wow, she is on to something so much deeper than I think she realizes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Well, let's do, we talk about triggers. Like right now, the narrative is don't trigger people. Yes, do trigger people because that's how yeah. you can grow and learn. Is our really, slingshot. Yeah, that's what. What triggers me is not going to trigger Liz. What triggers people mm -hmm. watching is it going to? That's unique to your your patterning. Yeah. And we all have these particular patterns. So when I feel triggered by something, my responsibility as a human being, as an evolved spiritual soul, is to go. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. When that person said that, it made me feel this way. Why is that? Because I'm sure that person didn't mean it that way, but why am I reacting? Let me, because any of those triggers, those are all attachments that are disconnecting mm -hmm. you from God. Yep. It's like your button to ascension. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love that. Exactly. I love that metaphor. It's like someone triggers you, they hit a button and it's your choice. Are you going to ascend? Or are you going to descend? Which one? Are you going to investigate? <laughs> like, why? Why did I do? Yeah. Why did I react that way? And yes, we can get mm -hmm. to like past life memories. We can get to, you know, trauma from this life. I mean, my trauma therapy was essential to my evolution through this. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's just you understanding that you being aware of, of why you're reacting and, and then taking responsibility for that. You know, it's yeah, not, you know, exactly. and, and that, and that, that's, and, and it's also, you know, I, I just said, if you have ego, if you have a big ego, then you don't trust God. You don't mm -hmm. trust that you don't, if you have a big yep. ego, because sure. the universe, God source has a plan for every single human being. There is a Dharma and guess what? You signed a soul contract before you took this body. So you also made this part of this plan as well. Yeah. Everything that happens to you, everything you go through in your life has already been assigned to you. And so I think when the ego gets involved, it's because we want to try to then like take over the steering wheel of that. We want to try to, we don't trust God. We don't trust the universe to provide for us. We don't trust the universe. And so our ego comes in, but when we mm -hmm. actually trust when we actually trust the universe and trust God, then we can be calm because yeah. things will fall into place as they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. What does Mr. T say? Nothing can stop what's coming. Yep. That's true yep. for all of our lives. Nothing's going to stop. My, uh, one of my teacher's teacher, uh, Guruji used to say, practice all is coming, practice all is coming. Well, um, you know, you could see that on a very low dimensional <laughs> level. If you pra practice makes perfect keep practicing mm -hmm. it. But also no, what he meant was practice all is coming. The good, the bad, the ugly, it's all coming. So yeah. keep practicing because all is yeah. coming. Yeah. Eventually your death is coming, you know, keep it's practicing. True. So do you feel like, so do you feel like what you're doing now is like essentially your soul's purpose or like what like makes you come alive? You know what I mean? Yes. Like, yes. Or is there something else that you like see in I the future? The world is a plot. I think we all got a few plot twists coming our way. For sure. <laughs> For Not sure. bad plot twists. I think they're going to be, I think, I think as we start to ascend, 
Mm -hmm. Um, I know I'm having more memories. I think we're going to start to understand things more fully because you have to remember coming into a third dense. This is a very dense planet. I, uh, Catherine and I did a video with Dr. Northrup the other day and she called it a game. I watched it. We right. all want to go get I love it. Planet I love I it. I was like, she said that I was like, oh, that's <laughs> it. It's a gangster planet. Like this, we're living in gangster's paradise right now. Like this. Yeah, is- I have a vision for it and everything. I'm ready. <laughs> I mean, like I was like, holy crap, that's it. Because we know yeah. Earth is like the Mac Daddy of dense planets. You know, if you've studied any of the law of one, any of the other, like all the other third density planets are nothing compared to Earth. Like if you volunteered to come to Earth. I really see it like the Hunger Games. You're like, I volunteer. Yeah. Like, this is for not real? the planet people want to come to, you know, yeah. for third density lessons because it's so dense. Um, and so, but part of that too is you come through with a neat amnesia. And we know mm-hmm. that the matrix system, we'll just say the matrix system because it's YouTube, has done a lot to try to, you know, entice the ego, entice fear, mm-hmm. entice all these low vibrational qualities to keep us from understanding who our soul really is, you know? Yeah. And so and that's our job is to be like, nah, I'm good. I'm going to go yep. focus on this over here because that's not really who I am or who any of us are in humanity. So, mm-hmm. um, so yes, I do. I do think that there's a great teacher who passed away in 2019 because he was really old. Uh, Ram Dass, the one who said we were all just walking <laughs> yeah. into the home. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I remember reading one of his books once, I can't remember which one there's, he's written many of them where he talked about, you can, you know, you can go through your life and things will happen to you. Like, why is this happening? But then a few years later, you can turn around and say, Oh, that's why that happened. Mm -hmm. And it's all stepping stones to the next thing, the next purpose, the next journey, the next chapter in your journey. And so I can turn around and look at my life. And I'm sure you can too. And I'm sure all the people watching to see how you got to this point in this. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most important things as humanity we've ever gone through. It's something we're all focused on. And this is a true battle for our souls. And I think everything that's happened to me in my life has brought me to this particular point right now at 4.07 PM on Friday, talking to you, you know, (laughs) but what's to come plot twist. I think it's going to be a whole lot of stuff that we aren't prepared for, but are going to be excited about. Yeah, for sure. Um, There was something else. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, I have like a list. I wrote questions. (laughs) (laughs) I try. Um, I was going to say, okay, so this is kind of like a, what, like if you could pick three defining moments, what would they be to get you to where you are now? Three defining moments. Well, when I was sick, when I was in high school, mm-hmm. going to India, mm-hmm. and probably, so if you had asked me, what year are we in 2020? So if you asked me two years ago from this date that I would be, I was already kind of thinking about starting a YouTube channel, but it was more going to be like just storytelling just for fun. Yeah. Cause I had a shawl. Yeah. I was running a program I was running. If you had told me that I wouldn't be teaching my store anymore, and yeah. I would be full time on YouTube and only part time teaching courses. I would have not believed you. So I think the sh- the lockdown that mm-hmm. forced that hand of God would be the third one. Okay. What about you? And the- oh, I wasn't. I wasn't expecting you to ask me back. <laughs> plot twist. Uh, oh, teacher, too. You got to make a plot twist, teacher. I do. I mean, that's a good one too. I do. Um, <laughs> let's see. Defining moments. Um, for sure, going to LA. Because that took me out of a whole, like, religious world <laughs> that I was in. Um, then going to Africa, for sure. And then the birth of my son, 100%, which he will be, too, on the 22nd. What's the 18th? Yep. Oh, It'll be two on Tuesday. Birthday. <laughs> that, that big astrological day. Yeah. Um, that's huge for him. And he's like the perfect child. I swear to God. He's so beautiful. <laughs> like aesthetic. He's getting a little feisty. He's getting into the twos. The transformative twos. We're going to call it instead of the terrible. <laughs> um, but yes, he's great. He's great. Uh, but yeah, he, uh, I definitely like something, which, uh, what's her name? doctor <laughs> yeah. that you talked to yesterday um or that was the video was up yesterday she uh she said it best like a, when you have a child like you as a woman completely change 
You are complete. You go through a birth, a rebirth, basically. So I definitely think it was going to LA, being in film school. It brought a whole lot of healing. Um, Going to Africa, another level of healing. And then love. I met my husband. And then the birth of my son. (laughs) Yeah. I definitely think those are all. Because the birth of my son very much gave me this, I don't give a F attitude. (laughs) Like I'm going to do what I want to do. Like no one can tell me differently, like not in a rebellious way, but like a, I know who I am kind of way. (laughs) And I know my body and my baby. (laughs) I freaking created a child. I created a human. (laughs) Like, are you a portal? Mm, I don't think so. (laughs) This is a comedian. One of the comedians did a whole stand up about like, Hey, listen, I'm busy making an eyeball. Like when she was pregnant, like she was trying to get her husband to like do things. He's like, I'm tired. She's like, listen, I'm yeah. busy making an eyeball. You Are you growing like- an extra brain in there? No. <laughs> Try to tell me. Looking a human. You can take the gr- trash out. So I'm a portal to another world. Be careful how you talk to me. Thank you. <laughs> Literally. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Those are definitely my defining moments. Yeah. The woman's body is amazing that the whole molecular, the structure of the body is, is made to, to actually bring something through, you know, um, and that's incredible that the, that the body can do that, 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 you know, a sperm and an egg can actually, and they say, well, we, you you that told me this, somebody told me that. So when the sperm and the egg actually meet, there's like a spark of light. Yep. And there's happens. a literal explosion, which is um, that they can't actually measure. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they call it, it's like in the, in the Hebrew, it's called the Yakita, which is the spark of life. Like the all spark kind of thing. Yep. And that happens in my body, your body, not a man's body. <laughs> I'm busy making an eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy, busy being a, bringing a being into this dimension. Like you're just eating a sandwich. Can your body feed a human? Because mine can. I'm <laughs> getting all kinds of woman empowerment birthing <laughs> shirts. Or birthing my, sister, throughout the three, my sister's three kids. Every time she's like, I'm just the McDonald's. Like I'm just the milk lady. That's yeah. all I am to I'm my Literally kids. the food truck. <laughs> the milk lady. They're like, where's the milk lady? Like when they're yeah. babies, they're like, where's that milk lady? <laughs> yeah. I literally, I just stopped nursing Levi and it's been the most freeing I've ever felt in my life. <laughs> I love it, but my God, I'm so, I'm so happy not being touched 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah. Well, I, I have to, all three, my nephew and my two nieces, when they're all babies, I would be holding them and all three of them tried to nurse for me. Like we got, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I don't got I don't anything right now. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. shop is closed. <laughs> um, right. So yeah, but that's pretty amazing. You know, the, for yeah. women watching like, and for husbands watching honor your wives because yeah, they, they made your kids eyeballs. So We're pretty boss. We're yes. pretty boss. <laughs> um, okay. So um, who are the most inspiring people that you, okay. You can do like three that you don't know, like people you've read about or in the past or, and then three people, you know, mm, that's a really good question. I love, I, I, I feel like this says so much about people when they answer this. So well, the, first, this the first person that comes to my mind is Mary Magdalene. And I don't know if I can mm-hmm. say I know her or I don't know her because I feel like I know her. Right. <laughs> she's well. like in the in between. <laughs> yeah. She's gonna, I've had all these orbs around me and I have so many people saying, oh, it's me. I can feel it. It's Mary Magdalene. I feel like she's the mm-hmm. one doing the series on my channel. I'm just the conduit. Um, yeah. So I feel like she's and, and the fact that she came into my head at 16 before I even really cared. Um, I feel like she's been very pivotal pivotal in my life um someone that i knew like literally knew would be my dad's father um my grand my grandfather ed watson he um he had a near-death experience when he was in his 40s Mm. before i was born so i only knew him post after all this happened but he always had this like certainty about him he didn't fear Mm -hmm. death and he was so integral with everything and he was like six foot five so he was like this this huge man that just you know larger than life but he was so integral and he had so much character another person probably my dad's mom and i didn't my dad's parents growing up we didn't see them as much as my mom's family but my grandmother marianne who just recently passed away in october she was kind of the original black sheep i think she kind of paved the way for me 
because uh, both of my families are very traditional. And mm -hmm. uh, she she grew up in South Georgia on a dairy farm. And, um, you know, she I asked her once because she tried to teach me to meditate when I was like eight years old. And I asked her once, I was like, Grandma, how did you learn how to meditate? Like, what did you, you grew up in South Georgia yeah. like in the 30s, yeah. 40s. Like, who was teaching about it? She goes, well, you know, growing up in South Georgia, it was so damn hot. All we had to do was just sit out there and stare at something. Like we couldn't, we couldn't do anything else. It's just so damn hot. Um, yeah. So, but she's so had, she used to hide all these books on reincarnation under the bed for my granddad. Like she was really <laughs> into, you know, she played the piano at the church every Sunday. She was like really into like the spiritual faith. Um, she was very well educated. She went to college, graduated valedictorian in a time when there no women were going to college. Um, she ended up going back to school, became a therapist. Um, always worked. She was like the first woman to join the Rotary Club, the Business Mint Club. Um, she was very, very, very strong, but she was also very feminine as well. And, and mm -hmm. she, I think she kind of, maybe through osmosis as well, kind of inspired me a lot in my journey. And I think, um, you know, when I started going off to India, a lot of my family were like, that's why is she doing this? And my, my grandmother was very supportive of that, of me doing that. And I often think maybe that's something she would have done if she were younger. And had those yeah. opportunities, um, you know, if it was, it was, if it was socially acceptable for her, which it wasn't when she was, yeah. married, you know, so. What I, I just had a thought come in, like, uh, so you said she died in October, right? Okay. So what I find interesting was you had kind of your tower moment after she died. And I think that maybe she died when she did to like help you through that. Like she, you know, because I totally believe that like a lot of our family, not all of it, but a lot of our family becomes like what I call your like cloud of witness behind you, yeah. like your guides or your team or whatever, yeah. like they're there with you. And I kind of, I just had that sense that like, she's, yeah, she, she's there. She's come through <laughs> her, her, my grandfather, her, and my grandfather have come through. Um, she's told me many times that we've had many, many lives together. So, um, yeah, I do believe that as well. Her, my grandfather, my mom's mom who passed away when I was eight, about to turn nine. And mm -hmm. I've seen her around me ever since then. Like she's been around yeah. my grandmother, Maxine, my grand, my mom's dad has already reincarnated into another. Oh. And I know who it is, but I won't say it on the, on the air, but I know That's who fun. it is. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so he's already back in a, in a body. And it's so funny because the person it turns out he is, I always suspected it's one of my cousins. Yeah. I always suspected okay. that was him because I was the only yeah. grandchild that really got to know my, my grandfather on that side before he passed away. I was like, <laughs> your granddad, like that. So, yeah, <laughs> um, but, so um, but so the three of them, yeah, they've come through in channelings a lot these past few months, uh, very much so. So I think they are very much around on the other side, helping yeah. in this moment, um, for yeah. sure, for sure. Um, yeah. more dead people. Let's see are people. I didn't know. <laughs> dead people. People, it's hard because our history now is so freaking manipulated that yeah. it's hard to look back and say, I don't know if that person well i just figured that. since you've done all the missing books and whatnot i figured you might have had a few that like you've read about like that well yasha was very fascinating to me now because oh well, yeah. jesus wasn't his yeah. name um <laughs> not his name and i know i've been saying this more i've been more comfortable saying this more and more and more but i'm finding my research he was never crucified mm. that's satanic that was a satanic oh. ritual that they tried to loop us into um, and so I've been really researching who Yahshua really, the Christ really was. And of course, we well, on that, on, on that note, the like never crucified, I find it interesting that like a lot of Christians, especially like really religious ones, they, they, um, they focus on his death, but he didn't die. Cause how do we measure death? They, your body mm -hmm. is dead. He yeah. didn't die. <laughs> like he's yeah. still alive. <laughs> yeah. Like, and that's it's that's one of those things that like even if he was or wasn't crucified, like he's not dead. And the drinking <laughs> of the blood, the the communion, like that's all what they do at that campsite. I'm not gonna say the name of it in California. That's what they do on those yeah. islands in the tunnels. Right. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. all of a sudden it's like, oh my god. And of course, yeah. I did a deep dive a long time ago into Mithraism, which is basically what the Christian faith is. It's Mithraism. It's not, mm -hmm. not at all. I know that the, 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 you know, I did a huge deep dive on Zublik's channel. I think I put a little on my channel about uh, King James Bible, that all of our Bibles, mm -hmm. we have our variations of the King James Bible. King James was a Satanist. 
He was mm-hmm. a total yeah. Satanist. And I just- love what you said the other day about the ha ha ha. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, I can see him. I can see him say that. <laughs> yeah. We were messing around the pendulum board and we were asking something about the Bible, about how source felt about it. And I literally thought, you know, my idea of source is that it was going to be some profound message. Yeah. H A H. And I was like, what's he going to say? A. And I was, and it stopped. And I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> Ha ha. He literally just said ha ha about the the Bible. But you know, the thing is what what I think I know, Liz, you and I have talked about this. Like people who are super fundamentalist are gonna have such a hard time with this. We haven't seen the Bible. No one has ever seen the Bible. It is underneath the Vatican. Yeah. This this is not the Bible. No. This is propaganda. Yeah. Exactly. This is propaganda. And I know for me, I don't even think the old Testament, that's not even the same God. Yeah. That's Lucifer. I, I've heard that. I've heard that. Yeah. Too. I like, it's one of those things that like, I don't, I haven't done research in and haven't like really dive deep into it, but it's like there and I'm just going to let it sit there until I like feel like it's. Yeah. One way. <laughs> I mean, like, I, when after we can discuss up, these things, but we don't have to be solid on them, guys. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I know people are going to ruffle, ruffle feathers, but we have to look at these things. This group, yeah. this matrix group, is in all aspects of our life, including the church, right? Including yeah, the church. 100%. Doesn't mean that that God is not absolutely going through with all these the missing books of the Bible and doing all this research has actually strengthened my faith. Yeah, it's, it's made me more faithful. It's made me more. Love, feel, feel the, the love more from from right. source than anything and i mean even abraham i mean abraham was not a good guy he was mm-hmm. not anybody yep. and, and jesus in the gospel of holy 12 yashua says that very clearly more than one wife not good mm. not good not the way that that's that's this whole that's a the you know when we have i'll say this coded you know in atlanta we have a lot of traffic when you have a lot of wives, you have a lot of T word, you know, <laughs> you're, that's what you're doing basically. That's what you're doing. Yep. Yeah. Um, the 12 tribes of 12 tribes of Israel are not earth-based. It's yeah. galactic. Yeah. We all carry the DNA of the galactics. What's your tribe? Which, it would make sense with the zodiacs and all that. I think they're all based off of that. If yeah. not that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, uh, even even that um, Ian Clayton guy that I've talked about, he talked. He calls it the Mazaroth because that's what Hebraically it's called. Um, this you know, the stars and the constellations and whatnot. And he says that we came from where when we decided to come to this realm, we came through one of those houses. Yes, and we have families in those houses. Yes, and you know your family's the like soul family or part of the soul family that you have here on earth is those that you were with before, basically. I 100%. It's it's interesting too, because my research into the 12 tribes of galactic tribes, something that's going to start to happen. And I know I've said this on other shows before, but I just find it so freaking cool. Um, We'll start to know the, know who each other's are, who we are by our coloring. So like the, the, the Lyran group Mm -hmm. is the house of Judah. That's the lion. The Lyran is the lion. Okay. The lion of Judah. That's the group that carries the Christ consciousness. Okay. They have a golden look to them. There's a golden hue to the Lyran yeah. group. Anyone who's Lyran. Well, what did they say about Mr. T? <laughs> yeah. Orange, orange man, man bad. bad. <laughs> yeah. That's Lyran. You have a little bit of an orange glow. I don't know if you tan, but. <laughs> No, yeah, I, I, know, I, I know. I've done. I know I'm Lyran as well. I know that's where my okay. my I, I have. I know I have the DNA of a lot of Palladian, but I, my soul is Lyran, is what I've been told, and that's wild because you, you do. You actually have soul parents too, so you have parents that are not your biological parents. It's mm-hmm. wild. It's freaking yeah. wild when you yeah. start to break it all down. But yeah, I know. I know I'm Lyran. That's where my. I know I'm. It's one of the oldest groups. So the Lyran group is like the yeah. oldest souls. Um. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I don't know what galactic tribe it would be, but it's the tribe of Gad, which is what David was a part of, apparently. I don't know which. I, it. I, I know people, I know people is. who are, I know. Oh, people. no. Are you okay? 
<laughs> my my husband just called. Okay. Oh, I it just switched off. <laughs> it just like moved, and I was like, "Oh no, I lost it." <laughs> no, no, you're no, no, you're good. You're good. Okay, I can cool. look into that for you though. I I know yeah. people who are way more um well versed in this than I am because I never. <laughs> Sorry, I never... Your face is <laughs> hi, Levi. Do you want to say hi real quick? May I say hi? I guess I'll just point it down. Do you know that out of all the male disciples, Levi was the one who protected Mary Magdalene the most? Oh, really? That's cool. He respected her because she was Yahshua's chosen companion. And so he respected her. Even the other disciples did not because she was a woman. Levi did. Levi protected her. Yeah. He is my little protector. <laughs> he first, I call him my bodyguard. <laughs> You know, yeah, I always wanted a brother. I always wanted an older brother. That was the thing. I always, I'm the oldest, but I always wanted an older brother because I thought it was so cool that my friends, my girlfriends who had older brothers. Like yeah, they, me too. They would like body slam each other at their houses. My sister and I would just yeah. play barbies together, but their <laughs> older brothers would like protect their sisters, but Lord yeah. have they would get body slammed all the time. I mean, my yeah. niece, Jacqueline, Charlie, I mean, May's a baby still, but Charlie, my nephew, he'll body slam Jacqueline and Jacqueline will just be standing there and he'll body slam her. And she'll just take it. Like, oh, there's that handsome face. You're so say, hello. He's looking like a little boy now. He's really I know it's amazing. Stage. Very handsome. You're he picked out his outfit, outfit today. He's real oh, proud of it. Let me see. You are a little. You're a. You're a little Vogue model. You did a good job. I He's like got a little outfit. polo on. <laughs> Very okay, stylish. Little loud boy. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Um, I think my third person or. Uh, not my yeah, but third person, Yashua oh. Mary, that I never met would have been Ram Das, the one that I quote okay. a lot. He was yeah. very influential in my life. Like reading all of his books um, really changed me. Again, he's the one that kept saying, "We're all just walking each other home. We're all just yeah. walking each other home." Um, I highly suggest if anybody's more interested in yoga philosophy but don't necessarily want to go deep into like the Yoga Sutras yet, um, Ram Das's books are really good, especially "Polishing the Mirror" by Ram Das. Mm -hmm. um really really good he explains um he's the one that gets the, like when something triggers you instead of getting triggered or acting it out just say oh interesting interesting he, that's where i got that from was ram Dass. Yeah. um my uh this book uh his commentary on the bhagavad gita is one of the best commentaries ever i've reread this thing so many times you can actually see in it where i've like taken notes and how old it is it's literally he is literally one of the probably most pivotal teachers of the, I would say 20th century, even though he died in the 21st century and he, you know, he was in his eighties when he passed away, but uh, he left, like he exited right before it turned into a shit show with the, <laughs> he, was like, he was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm good. Power's done. I'm out. <laughs> so, have fun. <laughs> have fun. Yeah. So Ram Dass, like for sure, if anybody's looking and it's easy read, he doesn't write, too complicated you know um he uh he was a harvard professor before ever going off to india and uh becoming his, his birth name was richard albert um and so he even though he's highly intelligent he, he he doesn't overwrite he doesn't write over your head and so if anybody's interested in um understanding more eastern philosophy um ram das is a great person i i just i need I to read that him. Yeah, I like was, books that aren't like over like like they're not trying to prove anything by how right. many big words they can use. <laughs> like, well, that shows you his ego's gone, right? It has not got nothing to prove, right? Yeah, this yeah, is, it is what it is. Um, and so that's three. What's my third? My third, probably David Greig would be my third okay. human being that I know. He was my original teacher, um, Ashtanga teacher before I went to India. And even though I take philosophy classes and Sanskrit classes and all that stuff in India, everything I learned, I learned, I learned basically from him because he's a brilliant teacher. He's in the Philadelphia area and I would fly up to Philadelphia and practice with him and then come back. And he's absolutely amazing. David Greig. So yeah. he probably be the third. Well, I'll end on a fun one and just say, if you had three wishes and you can't wish for no more wishes, what would you wish right now? in this current state that you are in <laughs> of your life. 
God, I don't know. I feel like I would wish, I guess, for like literal peace between people, like no drama. Mm-hmm. I would wish for the truth to come to light more yeah. for people to see the truth more. Um, in yeah. harmony, I guess, because there's literally like, I'm very content in my day-to-day life. Like literally, I mean, that's the one good thing that you, that your practice gives you is you're, you kind of become a minimalist and, um, yeah. I'm very, I'm so grateful to, I mean, think about it. Like, I feel like my whole, I know you probably feel this way too, Liz, like our whole lives have changed being on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. I mean, we've got a whole new, I mean, I feel like at you, Catherine, Steph, like all these people, I David Zub, like all these uh, Shanti down in the Aquarius rising Africa. I know I'm forgetting somebody, but all the people we we've, we've become Taylor, <laughs> Taylor. Yes. Taylor. I'm like, Oh God, so many, like all these people that we've uh, Cheryl, uh, every, everybody that we've, we've gotten to yeah. know. It's like all the, none of these people, none of you guys would have come into my life if it wasn't for the tower moment of 2020. You know, and I'm yeah. so grateful. I'm so freaking grateful. Yeah. You know, and so, yeah. That's good. Well, I think it's a good note to end on. <laughs> I asked most of them, I think, maybe half of them. But it's, <laughs> sorry. I was just trying to over, you know, over prepare. Well, I always have, and I have to get you back on my channel too. And I would, would you want to come on one day with Stephanie? We do some, ta- some tarot reading and stuff. Yeah. Fun I've fun. also wanted to, I like really like feel like I vibe with Taylor. I like yeah. her too. She's, she's <laughs> super, really busy right now. She's had to back away a little bit because of her, her uh, quantum healing. She took, she goes under for like five hours with people. So when she, wow, her, when her schedule clear, she'll be coming back on the channel again. But um, yeah, she's yeah. super, super swamped. So um, such a, yeah. like a positive, like healer vibey type of person. And I'm like, yeah. I like you, girl. I feel like we can be friends. Yeah, I'll have you over my house. Amazing. She's amazing. <laughs> Taylor's amazing. So, uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, she's, yeah, she's great. And I've watched her do some quantum healing before she's tapped in. So yeah, yeah, I can tell, sure. <laughs> but yeah, I totally would. We can do that for sure. He's just dancing over here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> like, I love it. <laughs> You did. I, I people. Oh yeah. yes. <laughs> I, I had the BG stuck in my head this morning because somebody put a compilation together. I know people might be offended by this, but you just have to have a sense of humor. It was the the North Korea army and the way they march, and they put a compilation of "Staying Alive" by the BGs. Oh my gosh! The, <laughs> I, I was laughing so hard. <laughs> Like I was, yeah. I had to get on a film and I was like, the whole time I was like, and I was like, you don't have to do that. I just, oh, <laughs> people are funny. You got to, you got to laugh. I love stuff like that. That like, you're like, I would never put that together, but that is hilarious. Yes. People are funny. So yeah, I get it, Levi, you dance away. You just dance <laughs> your heart's content. You know what, Levi, every single morning at like 5 a.m. before I practice, more like 4.30, I listen to Broadway show tunes and I dance around. Oh yeah. And I'm yeah. 39 years old. So nice. <laughs> Nice. I do the cool. same thing. We have lots of dance parties here. He's a he's Thanks. turning into a little drummer boy, also. Fantastic. Oh yeah. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'm so glad we did this. So hopefully people know a little bit more about you now. <laughs> but yeah, I'd love to come back on your show anytime. Yeah, I mean, so I'm you know you have an here conversation now, so. on my show anytime you want, girl. You just got yeah, to girl. shoot me a text if I get it. My my right. technology is so screwed up lately. I'm like. I don't know. My phone keeps, I'll go to my text and my phone, my phone will say like downloading messages from iCloud and I don't get them. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, should I send her two texts? Like, should I do it like multiple times? Right away. Send me another text because yeah. chances yeah. are my email has been messed with all my, so yeah, I'm just, yeah. you know what? It's fine. It's just nothing can stop what's happening. It's all going to happen. Right. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much. Bye everyone. Have a Bye, good guys. day.